Watching a parade is as boring as a dog's ass. Oh my it's god! Like I, 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 never ask me to go watch a parade with you. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. I know that, Mr. Man. They also call them cereals. I'm not stupid, you know. The story is ludicrous. You can imagine where it goes from here. Victor's the cable. What if you couldn't remember your real name, your first kiss, or your last goodbye? I don't remember. And then suddenly, all your memories came flooding back to you one bullet at a time. I'm in the PTH! You're an assassin working for the United States government. Back when we first met, you were all like, oh, boy, I burned the darn muffins. Now... You go into a bar, ten minutes later, sailors come running out. What up with that? This fall, if you have plans for a calm, quiet evening, it's time to kiss them all. Good night. Gina Davis, Samuel L. Jackson, The Long Kiss, Good Night, directed by Rennie Harlan. It is After Dark. It is Black Dog Video. That makes this the Black Dog Video After Dark podcast, a.k.a. Black Dog after dark uh here in december mm. we have joined together joined forces our the, forces are joined the end of 2019 yeah get rid talk, of this wretched talk year about movies my name is dylan reimer i'm a stand-up comic and someone who works at black dog video and to my left is my name is al chisholm i work here at black dog video can i call you out can I call I you out? i've never called that, you out that before. just kind of slipped out um you I, can call me out I I that's what you're trying to say uh, right that's fine <laughs> or Alex Chisholm, that's fine. But I work at uh, the Black Dog Video, that's right. And I also work at the Rio Theater just down the street. <laughs> and I'm uh, Dare Gay. Uh, you can, uh, <laughs> I own this uh, wretched establishment that we're uh, huddled around the microphone at the desk at, uh, about to do a podcast. This is So this is uh, probably going to be the last podcast that hits the air in the year 2019. And so we want to say good night to 2019 what kind of good night are we going to say to uh long kiss goodnight. we're going to give this this uh this year a long kiss good night we are right uh it is the long kiss good night from uh 1995 i was surprised to find out it was that i thought it was in the 80s when i threw, I threw it on because gina davis is looking hot through her whole i don't life. know i just for some reason i assumed it was an 80s action movie so you have this predated um the accidental tourist <laughs> well, that, that's that's my bar for everything. That's how I judge all movies. It's, that, that's Transylvania that, that's, like, that's, that's like Jesus Christ being born is accidental tourist when that movie came out. That's how I judge everything. Jesus in his way was an accidental tourist. Oh, wow. The film is directed by Rennie Harlan. Who, did he ever make a good movie maybe besides this Are one? you crazy? I am a Rennie Harlan fan. He's a bit of a hack, I'd say. Exactly why I love him. Right. He's not an auteur, but if I were to make no, he's movies, not. I would make movies the way that Rennie Harlan makes movies. Crappy? Crappily? Yeah. Well, okay, so he did Die Hard 2. He did Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger, the, the only good part about Cliffhanger is the first 10 minutes. Oh, Cliffhanger's great. He oh. also made The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. Oh, that's right. That was, okay, that was... That was what's that, what's that comic thing? Got, he got Andrew Dice Clay. Right, right. And he got the... Uh, and Ed O'Neill's He got the gig for oh. Die Hard 2 because the executives were so pleased with the rushes of Adventures of Ford Fairlane. I remember watching Die Hard 2 on 9-11 with uh, one of my employees for some reason. How many numbers are involved in this story? That's a lot of... Uh, Die Hard 2 on 9-11. It was really weird. I grew up uh, very close to a discount movie theater, um, and so I just saw everything. And this was one of the movies I saw. Uh, and then I kind of forgot about it until about 10 years later when I saw Samuel L. Jackson on The Daily Show. And for some reason, Jon Stewart brought up this, whole, this insane clip where he um, – Near the end of the movie, when uh, when Sam Jackson is tied to the chair, oh, that's my, and he gets, that's, bl- he gets that's, blown through the. That was my favorite scene in the whole. Oh, dude! Actually, two. That's the, one of my two favorite scenes. There are two great yeah. <laughs> scenes in this movie, and that's one of them. Yeah. No. And then I remember thinking, like, you know what? I really have to go back and watch the long kiss good night again because that is batshit insane. I was laughing so and hard. And then when I, that I think I, I maybe even come down to Black Dog Video and rented it, and and was like, how did did I not? Totally love this movie the first time I saw it. My first experience was the night before we recorded our toys podcast because Dylan was, uh, of course, I'm talking about like he's not here, but Dylan was. Dylan, who? we would do Dylan, who's here oh, that right now, Ryan. Bob right. Dylan. He was hoping <laughs> Bob that Dylan we were would the uh, do Long Kiss Ugh. Goodnight instead of Toys. Anyway, we were discussing that 
back then, the possibility of doing Long Kiss Goodnight a few weeks ago. And I had never seen it, but over the years I've heard good things. I remember when it came out, but I didn't really feel any need to see it. I remember the reviews were quite poor and stuff at the time. And just what oh, it was Rennie Harlan. It was an action movie with, yeah, Gina Davis and Samuel L. Jackson. It's a weird, it's a weird parent. They were just coming off Cutthroat Island. Samuel no, L. Jackson was not Samuel L. Jackson, but Gina Davis had, and Rennie Harlan. He, he, it was a huge I've never bomb. seen. You got that I, backwards. Uh, Cutthroat Island was after Long Kiss. No, Cutthroat Island was before. Are you sure about yes. that? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm gonna put my money on Alex because uh, he's because after that, Cutthroat Island, why would you ever mine? give Rennie Harlan another movie? I know yeah, that's well, that's what I was thinking as well. Because Cutthroat Island is unwatchable. It was probably like a three pitcher deal or something. I don't know. But anyway, they were coming off that, and it was just supposed to be. I just heard really bad things about it at the time, and uh, I ignored it. And then um, the Saying so many movies, so little time. I just never got around to seeing it. But <laughs> so you have tattooed the on past your back. It, was, it was the same year. The past few years, same year, nineteen ninety-five. But Cutthroat came out was definitely slightly before. Right. But um, well, that might have accounted for the bad reviews for Long Kiss Goodnight. Exactly. Night. But um, anyway, I uh, were, all the critics had Rennie Harlan's bad taste in their mouths. Gina Davis has or... Rennie Harlan's bad taste in oh. her mouth. <laughs> And disgusted Alex there. Wow, that's a, that takes up quite a bit. So yeah. anyway, I ignored the film when it came out, but over the years I have heard good things. The film was Especially very sad. Here here was at Black boring. Dog, people have always said once in a while, I've heard people have been surprised by saying like, oh, I really love that film or it's a favorite of mine. Then you were suggesting it, and then at one of the Rio meetings, ooh, here's some insider information. We were having ooh, a programming meeting. <laughs> and one of the other programmers noted that a theater in Toronto, I forget which one specifically, but that a rep that cinema matter. in Toronto is showing Long Kiss Goodnight, and all these people were pumped about it because of its. It's got a you know a Christmas. It's a holiday movie. Holiday. It's got a little bit of cachet there, right? going on there. I think. So uh, so anyway, so I decided to check it out. I watched it anyway. I took it home for Black Dog the night before we recorded our toys podcast. This was about three weeks ago or whatever. And then and uh, yeah, I, I, that was my seen first it. time watching it and last. My favorite movie theater in Toronto is the Bloor Cinema, which is just uh, that's a wonderful nice, that, that, that's, yeah, that's a great. It's cinema. just Kitty Corner to Honest Ed's, which has a, a, a nice cameo in this film. Yeah, I don't think I, I think they're they're gone now, aren't they? Honest no, Ed's? Okay, Honest, Honest Ed's is gone, so yeah. so it was it was a treat to to see it um, in, in all in all its glory. I've heard things, and then I recently mentioned it even just just a bar here on the drive, Junior's a sports bar on the drive, a server there. They're not a sponsor, but I'll mention them anyway. The, a server there, a really cool guy, Adam. He mentioned it's one of his fave movies. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it's been yeah, because I brought it up. I brought up that we did the podcast and we were just talking over a beer one night, and I mentioned, yeah, you know, I just watched this one called The Long Kiss Goodnight that we didn't do for the podcast. We haven't decided to do it yet. Um, like I loved it, and uh, he brought up it was one of his favorite movies. Fantastic. How about you, Big D? I watched it on uh, the home videos when it came out. I don't remember exactly when or where or how or why. But I did watch it, and I actually thought it was really good. I, it was something a little – at the time, I thought it was like – maybe there's a bunch of like crappy action movies that had come out, and I thought this was – Oh, the 90s of, was full of yeah, crappy action Yeah, it was like a little, of a, little bit of fresh air because it was something a little different. I wasn't ex- – it went places that it, I didn't think it was going to go when I watched it the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, the second time I watched it, which was uh, yesterday, um, it did go to the, those places because I knew there was going to those places. So I went to those places with the movie. I enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, no, the first time I liked, I watched it, I liked, I quite liked it. And it was on VHS and full screen. So, you know, oh. yeah, it was good. I, I, yeah, that's, I, that's, uh, that's the vague recollection I have of watching this film. And, it's no. yeah. And it like, it, and I'm, I would consider myself a fan of this movie. Like I probably have seen it more than most people. Like more people on the planet. Yeah, probably. No. I mean, other than the editors or whatever. Right. It, it somehow escaped my notice that this movie takes place at Christmas. Every year, they make such a big deal out of Die Hard, mm-hmm. and and then I started well, thinking, it's a, it's a far well, what about uh, what about uh, uh, Lethal Weapon, which is also a Christmas movie, and that, well, that, it takes place at Christmas. It means it's a Christmas movie, exactly like Die Hard, though. That's I mean, not a Christmas movie. It takes place at Christmas. But Die Hard, well, then Die Hard isn't a Christmas movie. No, it takes place at Christmas. It doesn't it does. mean it's a Christmas it's a movie. Christmas party. Well, what's the difference? Well, because a, a Christmas movie is about Christmas. These well, movies aren't about not Christmas. Necessarily. Yeah, sure. Um, no. Okay, no, no, but, but I, I think that the long kiss goodnight 
while it's not as good a film as Die Hard, at least deserves to sort of to be in that. It's a movie that is yeah. shown at Christmas because yeah. yeah. it takes place at Christmas, yeah. and it's a fucking it's a bloodlust action. You know, I'd be happy. Fest. I'd be happy to include um, this movie in my Christmas repertoire of Christmas movies that I watch yeah. every year, or movies that I watch at Christmas time. Doesn't mean it have to be in Christmas. Yeah, this movies, and the ref. The the ref is I yeah. yeah. Well, we did the ref last year, didn't we? That was the last uh, year's yeah, Christmas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, brilliant film. I love that movie. Yeah. Oh, that was torture. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. That's right. I forgot. You didn't like it. <laughs> well, you thought... oh. So anyway, so this movie came out in 1995, directed by <laughs> Rennie Harlan. I guess this is not the movie where Gina Davis and Rennie Harlan met. It must have been covered. It's, it's one of those two, because they're so close. Because, it's, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Doesn't really She's matter. not a thing about marrying people she does movies with, though, because she was married to Jeff Goldblum when they met on Transylvania 65,000. Were really? they actually married? I thought they were just engaged. Um, I thought they were married. They're also in the fly together. Uh, written by Shane Black. Just, uh, written by, okay, so, you know, Shane Black. Who Dylan tends to loathe. Yeah. I, well, no, I have a loathe him what's with, and love him What's with him in fucking Christmas movies? There are all those movies set at and Christmas time. And the kid, is, there's always a kid in it, and, and the kid always fucking ruins the movie. Or is there a kid in the, in the... Yeah, her daughter. Oh, right. So it starts out, oh, I miss opening credit sequences. Uh, the 90s was just full of them. What do you mean? I mean, like, before the actual movie starts, there's just, like, some kind of artistic opening credit sequence. Was there, was there in this? Yeah, yeah, there's, like, lots some... of weird negatives. Watched it yesterday, fuck. Yeah, yeah, it's her signature. Oh, like right, Charlie yeah, that's right, Baltimore. that's right, right, right. She kept, she was and practicing her, her signature. It's kind of like a Bond thing they had going on. Yeah, where it was, you without know... the naked ladies hanging off a gun. Oh, I, I love that, too. That's the only <laughs> thing this movie was lacking. Gina yeah. Davis, step it up, hang off a gun yeah, in your o- Only silhouette, though, of course. Yeah, yeah, I'll, really, I'll, yeah I'll leave a little of that imagination. Yeah. And then the gun goes off and there's, like, sparks. Anyways, yeah. so, no, uh, so we get that awesome opening credit sequence. And then, um, and then another totally hack trope. Parade, fucking well, parade. Well, parade is a bad call, but also like voiceover. Maybe voice- you like the parade. <laughs> One thing I hate is when a voiceover goes, "That's me." Mm. What yeah. I really hate is when they go, "That's me." No, not him. Uh. That's me. Like. Because I always think, well, are you sitting next to me in the theater watching it with me? <laughs> well, so, like, but I, I, to be honest, I don't even remember the voiceover. Did it just? Yeah, it, it starts out with a voiceover. But, but it, it, does the voiceover continue through the whole movie? Or does no, it, no, it just, no. It, just it, it doesn't come back at all. Which so is what's the point of that? Another reason why it shouldn't have even existed. What's the point? If there's a voiceover to start the movie, it's got to be through the whole movie. Now, Charlie Baltimore, but, but at this point, she thinks she's Samantha. Yes. It's uh, is telling you how great her life is in this small Caucasian town. Yeah. And she's she's the queen <laughs> of the parade. And she's on a she's on, like and and then again I was like, oh, why do people like parades? Like, what's the point of a parade? Yeah, gay people enough already. <laughs> that well, that that's a fun parade, but it's way there's, there's way too many people go. I, I don't even go to that anymore. There's way I don't, too many people. You know, I've actually never been to a gay pride parade. It's fun, but uh, if you want to wait in the hot sun for you know three or four hours, I'm not big on I was in. The Pride Parade several years ago, the Rio had a float and it was so fun. I bet we had a float. We had so a far. we had a bus, like a double decker bus, and we had Spice Girl drag queens on the bus with us. What were you dressed as? It was basically a forty five minute bus ride. And it was like, it felt like an amusement park ride. Be a rock star for 45 minutes. Everywhere you look, crowd hysteria. Just, just cheering. Us on, looking up at apartment buildings and people are waving you yeah. down to you from balconies. It was so fun. Did you, uh, did you have like a squirt gun or anything like that? Or no, uh, nothing like that. I just held sticks? up various Rio signage. I was kind of like, we let the drag queens and we also had burlesque performers and some employees are younger employees in like colorful costumes and right. stuff. Really taking center. I was like in the background holding up signs and yeah. stuff, but it was a blast. I was oh, yeah. in a parade. Oh. It was more fun than watching a parade. But it watching was a parade is as boring as a dog's ass. Oh my it's god! It's like I, I, I never asked me to go watch a parade with you because I will say no. I'm not going to go watch a yeah, parade. Yeah, I always wondered who likes parades. I don't know. I've never, I've never been a fan, and I'll hopefully never. I, ever I see used to love. Parade. I got to drop in my obligatory Dartmouth reference: the Dartmouth right. Natal Day Parade. What does that mean? Well, it's like the birthday of Dharma. They called it Natal Day. Natal Day. Natal Day. That's right. And uh, there that was sounds, also a fair. Creepy. It sounds like a wicker they man. They used to boil thing. hot dogs and make cotton candy out of lake water. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. Like they were right on the shore of Lake Minook, but there was a parade sounds every delicious. year. I, I so, 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 so you won't drink the water in the video store, but you'll eat lake water cotton I candy. I was really just teasing about the water <laughs> in the video store, but I just wanted something with some fish. And, and the weird thing is they actually found the hot dogs in the lake. <laughs> the lake. Yeah. Like, yeah, those aren't hot dogs. Fish up those uh, lake hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, Dartmouth lake hot yeah, dogs. They're a little cold, but... 
Um, I, uh, I quite I quite like uh, those Cold War um, military nuclear bomb parades. So those are those are fat. Well, you mean that, you mean you mean the ones if you go to like Red Square in Russia? Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. in nineteen eighty. Three. That'd be the Soviet Union. Then. Yeah. yeah, you put an underdog in there. There's lots of missiles and tanks and people like walking with their legs high in the air. Okay, we have to talk about this movie. Why don't you? It's sort of like just us like yelling at each other. Why don't you do the summary and we'll so, interject? So uh, at this point, uh, Gina Davis thinks she is a character named Samantha, who is like the queen of the parade of a small town. It's like very so Santa Claus it's, parade. It's like, yeah, Santa Claus parade in like a Home Alone town. It's like it's just so fucking perfect. Yeah. And uh, you hear her voice over, and, and, and I woke up on the beach, and I had no idea who I was, but I was pregnant, and here's my daughter, and Been here's there. my boyfriend, and somehow I, I, I can afford a fucking house. She has does she the have a, idyllic does, life. Does she's she, married. Does, does she have a no, job? she's not married. Uh, oh. No, 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 because they have a conversation where they're like, she'll be getting married, but whatever. Oh, wow. Uh, That's right. As far right, as right. she's a, te- she's a school teacher, and, and back in the 90s, school teachers could easly afford two-story houses well what about i'm sure that her not husband has a job that probably can uh she can but they're not married that's for sure well they're living in sin then is well, what I, got you're the, saying. I got the impression that he Fornicators. that they didn't Whoa. live together but, but, but no no they, they all live together okay whatever so she she's not married she has a kid that she woke up with amnesia she was knocked up on the beach right um my question is have you ever met anybody or know Anybody who's had amnesia. I can't remember. No. <laughs> it's a movie thing, obviously, because I don't think amnesia is a real thing. It's mm. real. Not oh, bullshit. It's real, but rare. It happens it happens rare. very often in the movies. Soap operas especially. Yes. I, I, I rolled my eyes. My, my eyes actually rolled back in my head, and I couldn't see anything. And then I, they came back, and I was okay. Uh, extreme trauma, whatever. <laughs> or, or whatever. <laughs> so she's not, well, in the movie, it's treated as whatever. Uh-huh. And, and, she, and she also points out that she has hired a bunch of private detectives, starting with expensive ones, and they couldn't find out who, right. who the hell she is. Because it's so hard to figure out who a beautiful woman actually is these days. <laughs> I know. And so now she's just she's just got like hacks. Yeah. Like Samuel L. Jackson working on it. Now, it, does the guy in prison see her on TV before Samuel L. Jackson is introduced? This is the way I have here. Okay. Um, and so that the, there's there's the amnesia thing. We're introduced to her. Introduced to her family. And they're introduced to that the bear, Mr. Perkins, for Mr. some reason. Perkins. Mr. Perkins, which comes into play later, that, that, which, well which, which you know is going to come into play later. And she puts the necklace. No, that's she does that later. But and then uh, then they have a Christmas party and there's a lot of bad Christmas sweaters. Yeah. And there are, but you yeah. can, you can you can just feel that there's something a little bit off. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But because everyone's having a good time. And she and she drives. She oh yeah and, and and then her boyfriend tells a terrible joke. And and then, and then yeah then uh, the, oh fuck I do well, drink and smoke. And then well then somebody offers some advice at the party. So I think she says it to the kid. He says to the kid says, uh, "May the best of your past be the worst of your future." And I sat there I was like, "What what what?" Now, I've seen this movie like 10 or 15 times. You say you've seen it more than anyone in the world. Yeah, 10 or 15 times. Really? But that's brilliant. I, I never noticed that. Mm. Yeah, may the, the best, the of, your worst, pa- the best the, of your past be the worst of your future. Which took me a while to figure out because, well, I had a few beers I was watching as well. Then we meet Samuel L. Jackson, who's uh, who's pulling some sort of con. Yeah, he's like a shakedown. On yeah, some, on well, some he's, he's got some hobos, one who barfs in the woman's apartment that he's trying to... Uh, he, 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 he frames him. And then he start, starts, yeah, that's right. And then he starts talking about ass fucking. And like, and he kept going about ass fucking. Like, really? That's really? Shane Black. Really? Hey, come on. Shane Black always does yeah. that. Yeah. They cut to, uh, after the the party, um, Gina Davis is driving the, the police chief from police squad. Police home. squad, that's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Alan North. And he keeps distracting her because he's putting his hand in front of her he's face. He's drunk and, and she's sober. Yeah. And she has that funny line where she's like, can you do me a favor? And, uh. Every every couple of every couple of lines have bubbles come out of your head and go hick. I don't right, know. Right, right. Just, she's she's yeah. clever. She's smart. Yeah. You know. And then, and then there's a deer all of a sudden just standing in the road. Oh, because he's waving his hands in your face yeah. too. Yeah. And but, there's a deer. But the, and there's a, the, actually this is my the, the, for me the funniest part in the movie. I know it's, it's tragic when you hit a deer and the deer crashes through the window and then kicks him in the face yeah. or kicks him in the head which which I, I i thought i don't know why but i thought that was hilarious that happens <laughs> crash into the woods hit a tree she was flying through the windshield yeah, yeah, yeah. like flying through the windshield yes 
And then the car catches fire. And she has no broken limbs or nope. anything. And then she gets up and makes sure the deer's okay while her friend's burning Ma- to death okay. in the car. Okay, no, she breaks she its goes neck. She breaks its neck. No, because she hated that no, deer. No, no, because... because She's she, hungry. She wants, the, she wants some because venison. Because the accident triggered uh, the Charlie Baltimore right. to, 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 to come yeah. back to the surface. And, 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 and I love that scene. because it's suffering, too. Yes, of course. Well, but, uh, and, yeah. then, and she wanted to you know, have that delicious venison. That's right. Well, she was hungry. In that situation, you should probably have checked on your friend in the car first before the deer. Sure, the deer is I'm suffering, but the last, she's so stunned. The last two or shot. three times I've gone through a windshield. <laughs> it, so I love this scene because it, it tells you so much about the character. Mm-hmm. She understands justice. She sees a suffering animal, but she also like is, she wants, a fish, is an efficient killer. But she wants to make that animal pay for making her wipe off the uh, wipe uh, wipe out on the road. You think it was a revenge thing? It was a revenge, totally revenge. No, she wanted to put it out of his misery. And then, um, and what happens? After then we cut the to the, uh, the, the the scary guy in prison who's like, like by himself in a room watching a TV that's in a cage. Right. He's his attention is wrapped to the TV watching the local news of a Santa Claus parade. <laughs> that's right. He's like. <laughs> With, with his one eye. Is he going to come to the chimney even though I'm in a fucking cell? <laughs> and then so he, he kind of goes crazy and then it cuts back to the house where... No, because he, he starts going like, Charlie Baltimore! Yeah, and starts smashing the, the yeah, cage. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing that a cage on the and TV... And you don't see how perfect. he escapes from prison. No, it just, it just he just escaped. Nor do you want, know how he found her home address. Nope, nope. <laughs> um, well, he knows what town she's in at least because of the... Parade. So he just went around knocking on doors. <laughs> yeah. there. Charlie Baltimore? Nope. Charlie Baltimore? Nope. Well, he's, he's missing an eye and he's yeah. like all... In, <laughs> it is an or- in or- his orange jumpsuit. jumpsuit yeah. Yeah. Um, and, then it, and then it cuts to the the scene when she's lear- she's trying to chop a carrot. Oh, and, I'm yeah, like, yeah. and I'm like, holy shit, lady. Have you never chopped a carrot before? Like You're, you're, you're like bludgeoning it with the, probably the wrong side of the knife. You're, it's the worst I thought she was pretty good at No, chopping she was carrot. terrible. She was terrible. She's chopping broccoli. But, but, but then then she comes back to her and she starts chopping like a pro. It's like... Oh, okay. <laughs> and then and then she starts and then start giving she her vegetables. She's the meat. Yeah. Which, which is actually which is actually a pretty fun scene, and then That's yeah, a great scene. then it yeah. turns kind of crazy because what is it? she throws a tomato and, <laughs> and then throws a knife to the wall to the like into the, the cupboard and the, and it, everyone just kind of looks at her in abject horror and she goes what chefs do that right chefs do that well, Gordon <laughs> Ramsay for sure yeah well see he he you know he cooks but, but he he learned that in a pub in Glasgow yeah or in prison isn't that how Anthony Bourdain died yeah he threw a knife at himself yeah the, the tomato stuck it's to the his hardest plate. way to kill yourself is to throw a knife and then run in front yeah. of it. And the music in that scene is the worst. Is it, is it bad music? I don't remember. Oh my god, it's like an episode of Family Matters, like saxophone. Saxophone. And here's the thing, is this movie came out in 95, so this is like at least five years after saxophone was cool. So, so saxophone was really she's all never like, cool. She's all like, chop, she's chopping broccoli, and then you hear like, <laughs> family. Well, I thought you were actually and, playing and they're, saxophone and they're like, there. they're like throwing um, uh, uh, like, like all the, all, yellow peppers and yeah, stuff out. All the, all the vegetables they can find. That's going to be one gargantuan salad when she's done chopping all that up. She's they're like, not, I used to be a chef. Yeah, they're, they're not, they're not, that, uh, well, the thing is, that never comes back into play, her chef skills. Like, like that's not a, oh, well, you know, oh, oh, she, no, 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 it's because she was in the accident. And it, and it brought Charlie Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. She's getting little flashes. She's getting little flashes. So and, and, and and then they make a, a Baywatch joke. Oh, that's a good joke. Though. Baywatch Nights, which I didn't know was a thing. Oh, what? dude, Baywatch Nights. Yeah. How, what, it dude, didn't last long. Were you never burned. a young man? No. Okay, Baywatch Nights. You were supposed to bully <laughs> that David Hasselhoff from the Baywatch crew. But well, people don't go swimming the, at night. Once the no no once the sun went down, then Chilly but David Hasselhoff was also a private detective. So he wasn't just <laughs> a lifeguard. Oh my God, fucking Baywatch. <laughs> I, I'm so glad this movie reminded me of the existence of Baywatch Nights. That show is ludicrous. Fuck. Yeah, what, Baywatch wasn't? Do you remember uh, Acapulco Heat? That was another one from that era. That was crazy. And it always showed Fabio in the opening credits, but he Fabio. was rarely in an episode. Oh. Well, this was Fabio was a myth. Yeah, he's not real. Do you, <laughs> do you remember, remember you got hit in the face with a seagull on a, on a roller coaster? Uh, yes. <laughs> What's that? What? Brent what Butt. That? Brent really? Butt has the funniest fucking joke about, like, <laughs> how he said so many facelifts that his face is the tensile strength of the front of a 747. <laughs> Here comes a flock of owls. Get behind my face. Oh, fuck, that's funny. That's funny. Now, do you guys remember Sweating Bullets? That's the sexy 90s show. Uh, I've heard the name. I don't remember it. It starred a guy from Richmond. And uh, sweating bullets it only ran for like three seasons, and it was like it was like a it was it was a knockoff of Magnum PI, you know. 
Right. Anyways, turns but, out, but, 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 turns mission? out this guy, this guy is huge in Serbia. So like, the guy from Serbia. Sweating Bullets is 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 like Game of Thrones in Serbia. Wow. And so this guy, he just like lives in Richmond in a house and he buys groceries and no one knows who he. he it's like maybe it's like, are you the guy from Sweating Bullets twenty five years ago? <laughs> Nobody's gonna remember that. But then he doesn't look. He probably doesn't look. So like, like the that. Globe and Mail did a, a whole piece on him where they got on a plane with him to Serbia and when he got off the plane it was like the fucking Beatles. Wow. Like, once a year he goes back. Um, probably, probably just and, get laid. And he does like charity appearances and stuff. Like it's insane. And then he comes back to Richmond and no one knows who he is. And then he goes gives, and gets his groceries. Anyway, she's know. got she's got some bad guys after she's her. She's got some bad guys because she is actually Charlie Baltimore. Right. Uh, so played by Craig Birko. I've heard that name. He's an actor that I really like. Um, really? He's he's like a character actor. The Long Kiss Goodnight is probably his like most uh, recognizable credit. I'm just talking which, at this which point. Which guy was Craig Bierko? He was the bad guy. Which, which bad guy? There's a couple bad guys. He's the guy, the guy who who perpetually looks like he hasn't shaved in three days. Wait, is he the really good looking bad guy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's, he, anyways, and he's got a guy hanging in like a, a warehouse or whatever. Oh right, yeah. He's tickling him or something. Anyways, and he gets a phone call uh, saying like, because he was supposed to have killed Charlie Baltimore right. like seven years ago or whatever. Yeah. But then he stabs the guy in in, in the gut yeah. with a, a really cool looking like. Yeah, it's uh, one of those one of those those knives that like has a finger things on it. Is that wait? Like like remember knife. that? It's, it's like all, all bendy. <laughs> That's right. It's like unnecessarily curvy. It actually looks just to make it hurt more. It, it well, actually looks more hard to use than it's just a knife that knife that's straight when you stab him because you got to sort of get it on an angle or something. like If that. your opponent is hanging by his by his wrist, no, oh, you can do it. It's you an want. easy to win fight. Yes. <laughs> it's not, I wouldn't even call it a fight. So no. <laughs> I, you're not from Surrey. <laughs> Talk Can about we agree the that Craig Bierko sounds like a local brewing company? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we can Alex, agree. High five, motherfucker. <laughs> we, 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 we can agree on no, that. No, no. The Craig Bierko. Stop, doing that. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. And then so and so we go back to Gina Davis, who's taking her kids skating. And, oh, yeah. and, and the, the Charlie Baltimore is starting to come out in her a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, and so the kid falls down. Um, unbeknownst to Charlie Baltimore, the kid actually fractures her wrist, but she's uh, she doesn't give a shit. She grabs the kid, makes her get up on her skates and say, you're skating over no, the... No, no. The... First she says, life is pain. Get used to it. Get used to it. <laughs> so Charlie Baltimore is starting to kind of creep out. I mean, uh -huh. this is very much a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of movie, right? Mrs. Hyde. Uh, and then she forces her kid to skate all the way across the pond. With a fractured wrist. With a fractured wrist. So that's bad parenting right there. And then right she there. feels really bad, bad about it. Yeah, she does feel Way real bad for a bit. And then so as she's feeling bad, bad about it, um, the, the, I guess the next scene is the uh, one-eyed dude shows up at the house. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, there's a knock on the door and, the, and there's um, – uh, you know uh, the, the the those irritating singers. Oh, the fucking carolers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Irritating singers. <laughs> and and, 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 and are Christmas they actually time. singing "Fa la 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 la" uh, while, while some... the guy has a shotgun behind him? Uh, he's he's hiding behind one with like with a gun to one of their heads or something like that because they're they're being held hostage. Yeah, they're, they're singing that awful Paul McCartney. Song. Oh, don't please don't even sing a, a second of that because that'll be in my brain and I'll, I'll murder everybody in this room Sorry, if, right, if you do that. That's the, right. one of the worst fucking things I've ever heard in my life. Like if I I, I would rather have hot wax poured in my ears and then have my ears scraped off my side of my head with like a dull blade than ever hear that again. Okay. I hate that song so much. Like what was he thinking? He's a fucking beetle. What's he doing? He was simply having a wonderful Christmas. Oh, time. stop! <laughs> Don't even allude to it. And why did he bother with the uh, carolers? Why? You know, why did he just knock on the fucking door? Yeah, he's got like a rocket launcher. Yeah, she, and he 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 knocks uh, her boyfriend out or whatever, whoever he, the relationship they have. The yeah, dad, the, but yeah, you know, and the then, dick for hire, whatever but, his name but, is. But then, but then he he blows a hole in the side of the house on the stairs, and <laughs> also uh, a hole in the um, treehouse right next to the oh, stairs. Perfect. Just so so Charlie Baltimore or Samantha <laughs> can huck the kids. Just hucks the, the <laughs> that was so kids. awesome. Ah! Oh, it's great. It's, right out of the house, great. into the tree. That was brilliant. And it's a good fight scene. <laughs> it was a really good fight scene. Probably great the best fight scene, scene yeah. in the movie, actually. And she kills him with a pie. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. She, great fight scene, kills him with a pie. Just like and not even like a neck. hot pie out of the oven. No. They went with lemon meringue. Well, that's, my, that's one of my favorite kind of pies. It would have been great if you'd seen her taking like a blueberry pie out of the oven so oh, you knew it was hot. scalding hot. Oh, that would be like napalm. 
And, that and, would, that yeah. would really fucking hurt. But then she'd have to like take the time to put like a, a, a oven mitt on because you know you can't just grab a pie out of the oven with a glass. Well, she grabs container. a machine gun from a burning corpse later in the film and, yeah. and doesn't even flinch. <laughs> doesn't he hit her with a jug of milk? <laughs> he hits her with a jug of milk. That's right, a, like a four liter jug of milk. But that would hurt. <laughs> it would hurt. That would really fucking hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and also, it's symbolic to the motherhood theme. Right, milk. Milk in her boobs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then she breaks his neck. Yeah, uh, his neck like venison a... style, just like the deer. Yeah, exactly. Even though I, I was wondering, he's got a pretty slimy head. I know. <laughs> I get, like, he kept slipping off. <laughs> when she first meets Samuel L. Jackson, it's right after she's been attacked yeah. by an assailant in yeah. her kitchen. Yeah. And she runs out screaming. And he's there. Looking for her daughter. And Sam Jackson's like, don't worry, your daughter's in my car. Yeah, I know. It's like, like, I'm like, who the fuck are you? Yeah, who are you? Why You're not I... a cop? No. But 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 I'm wondering, like, that she threw her into the – through the hole in the wall. They made a big point of the, the so, hole so, in the wall. So, so he climbed up so into the treehouse. Or she climbed down and then got into his car. For like, some reason? <laughs> when there's a maniac – okay, so that's one of the many things well, that well, makes well, no well, sense. Well, maybe because he, he had, like, a series of really nice hats in this movie. Oh, movie. no, no. I love I love everything that Sam Jackson wore. A Alex, you, you've been very quiet during this podcast. Am, you, you've nodded off a couple you times. You're, you're, you're welcome to, to – <laughs> If you want to join in, please do. Just keep going. So Sam Jackson introduces himself. Well, he's like, he's like, don't worry, lady. Like, you actually hired me and blah, blah, blah. And then she just goes to her family and goes, see you later. I'm going to go off with I, this private detective. Yeah, I go no, with this guy. Because he actually does have like a box full of uh, her belongings from, I guess, when she was Char Charlie Baltimore. Right. So then they go on the road. It's a little, it's a little confusing. And then he just totally catcalls this, this driver. Oh, it's great. Or this not driver, this jogger. It was like it was, he he almost drives off the road, craning his neck to look well, around. So so the, the, then they then they phone Brian Cox. <laughs> no 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 okay so but but they do establish in the car a, a certain rapport. Yes. Like like they definitely and I, and, and, get and, along. And I, I'm I'm still wondering how they know each other at this point. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still wondering why she's driving off with Samuel L. Jackson. You didn't know he was a private detective. I did. Well, not really, because the, when you're introduced to him, he's pulling a scam on somebody. I was confused too. I thought he was a scam artist, and then he uh, he hired a couple of hobos, one one of which who barfed in the guy's apartment, and because because they're yeah, because he's pretending to be a cop. I thought yeah. he was a criminal element from her past. Yeah, I did. I did, I did I there didn't was, think he it was. It wasn't. A, and and then they they, they wow. sort of alluded to finding amnesia woman, but I thought it was the scam her i thought it was just because he wanted he like everyone else was on to her yeah having a dark past let's pull let's pull a scam on her, her yeah she's right for the scam he's impersonating a cop he's he's a completely despicable uh, yeah well, well no, it's not completely I despicable. despicable no i wouldn't say despicable either he's he's pulling harmless pranks for money well no it's it, not a prank it's, it, well, it, it's not a prank it's, it's a con job yeah it's a con job but the guy the, the dude's cheating on his wife with a prostitute and so he gets burned fuck yeah. that guy you know, he's like, no one's getting hurt except for the guy who's like doing the cheating. Okay, so, so the first that guy. cops is pretty serious. So the thing well, is, well, to other cops. So, so, yeah, only cops care about that. Yeah, I know. I do it all well, the time. Well, I don't personally care. Do we care about, about people that. impersonating video store clerks? Oh, that, that really offends me. I guess I just like always knew that he was a PI. No, Apparently, so, this so, is Samuel no, on the phone. favorite film of his own to watch. Really? That he loves to rewatch. On this podcast, more than once, I have admitted to getting up and making a sandwich and missing a crucial piece of <laughs> – so I'm not, I'm not going to hold that well, you, against well, you, you. Well, you know when you're watching a movie at home yes. and you want to have a sandwich? Yeah. Put it on pause. Okay, so where were we? Now <clears> – <throat> We're introduced to Brian Cox's uh, – so he's having dinner with his kind of I, dim wife or mother. I can't, I'm not sure. He's in an old folks' home or I'm not I sure. I don't know what's going on. But, uh, but the dog is licking its own ass. Yeah, there's a dog about the, the – there's a joke about the dog licking its own ass. Well, no, he, he goes, uh, my appetite and your and your dog are mutually exclusive. Your dog has been licking its own anus for For, <laughs> for an hour. And it's, it's, it's just sitting in her lap licking its ass. And he goes yeah. – so fucking I gross. Goes, I he says something like – Dogs I, are I gross. I posit the – theory that whatever he's looking for has already been dislodged or is <laughs> or there for good or is there for good yeah, yeah it's actually it's a great, that's a really good line and every line that brian cox has in this movie is great i love brian he's when, my whenever, thing in this movie. whenever he's in a, a movie too, he's like my always my favorite because he's such a good actor and he's, oh, just, he's terrific and he always looks the same age he always looks yeah. fucking old this movie and <laughs> then and then x-men 2 yeah, he's the same age there's like there's like 13 years between this movies. Uh, 
How, have, even have, in Manhunter, he looks. He phones up Brian Cox. Yeah, and then they agree to meet the next day, and then Samuel L. and um, at the train station. Yes, at the train station, but they're in the hotel, and they're getting and they're like, uh, I guess so she's discovered she has a suitcase full of guns and yeah. knives <laughs> that she didn't didn't know were in her suitcase. Because you don't feel the those clothes are really heavy. Like, <laughs> I really love this moment because she even reassembles the, waited, the gun with complete yeah. precision. And and uh, did you notice what movie they're watching on television? Then? Yes, I did. It was uh, the, long the long goodbye. goodbye. Yeah. The long kiss goodbye. Mm, mm. Think about that. Mm. Oh. Well, the Elliot Gould. Yeah, yeah. So she has she has a bunch of nightmares. Do we have to get into this? By the way, Elliot yeah, really. Gould stars in my one of my favorite Christmas movies, The Silent Partner. The Silent Partner. They go to the train station. And then it's a bit of a shit show there. Sam Jackson uh, has to go take a leak. <laughs> yeah. Well, because she, uh, she's expecting to meet um, the Brian Cox character, but she doesn't remember who he is. And also, she doesn't really know who she was or whatever. Yeah, and so and so and the, then Craig a... Bierko walks up and right. offers to buy her a drink. Right. Yeah. But he's really creepy. And he's all like, "You really don't remember me." And then, of course, the shit goes down. Because no bad guy in this movie can do anything. Well, discreetly. I know well, there, there's there's a great scene where the guy comes walking in and she thinks it might be the Brian Cox character and she says his name and he kind of nods. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have any lines, but then pulls out a gun and then they start shooting and then they, everything goes crazy. This movie doesn't take bystanders into account at all. No, it's a it's a you, full train you station. You can't and just people... pull out a fucking gun in a train station and not have the police show up thirty but, seconds but, later. But they were mowing everybody down. Oh yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, they probably yeah. murdered like thirty people in that train station, and and this never gets on the news or anything. No, no. <laughs> so uh, that would be like that would be like worldwide news if that if if thirty people got mowed down in a train station. Black helicopters. So it's happened all the time, but we just never heard about <laughs> we it. We just don't know. So they have the the bad guys chase them up the stairs, up the stairs, and, and then they're they're kind of cornered. Well, yeah, they're on like the third floor. Yeah. Before they go into the building, she notices there's a sign in the parking lot that says "Danger Thin Ice" because I guess there's a little oh, lake. Oh, I didn't notice there's, there's that. A, there's a little lake outside of the yes. the building that says "Danger Thin Ice," and she they make a point of her looking at that and like, and so that this comes into play right now. When someone throws a grenade, which takes one one, which takes forever to blow up. Yeah, and then and enough time to go. Hey, look a grenade. grenade. What Let's, should we do? I guess we should run away. Run away. Because <laughs> grenades, <laughs> like, 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 gr- grenades are known for like just sitting there and waiting to explode. <laughs> yeah, and so they're they're running on the high the the hallway. She shoots at the glass, and the grenade explodes. And it's the most like like combustible like flamey grenade that I've ever seen in a movie. Flames yeah. just like blow out the building as as they're like they jump out the window and they're falling probably to their doom. But she remembers, ah, thin ice. So she shoots the ice <laughs> with her gun. Yes. And they go in through. In a circle. The, in a circle. And uh, and so they plummet into the water and it saves them as this huge flame blows out the yeah. building. Yeah. And they don't freeze to death in the water. Or, no, drown. That, you know, or drown or get sucked under the ice and they dry, like, you know, suffocate under the ice. And they run up the stairs to the parking lot and then Brian Cox pulls up in the car and goes, get, get in get now! In. The water's freezing to them. Yeah. People are shooting at them in the parking lot. Now, I, I, I love that scene. It was awesome. It was, yeah, I, 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 remember, I remember when I first watched the movie back in probably 96, whenever it came out on, on, on home video. That's the only scene I remember. From oh, it. it's, yeah. it, 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 well, it's it just, is my second favorite well, scene it, it, in the it, whole movie. The, the, the shot of, of when they're falling in slow motion and she's like with the, with the machine gun was, was awesome. I mean, it's ludicrous, but totally, it's totally ludicrous. But that's what I want from an action movie. And, and, the criticism I have of this movie is the longer it goes on, the more ludicrous it gets. It, and it kind of starts with the ludicrous with this part. I like the scene when she fights the one-eyed guy in the kitchen. It's a little more realistic. Yeah. And I wish they had stuck with a little more like realistic fighting thing until – because it gets really silly as it goes on. Yeah, they're defying the law of physics originally. Like yeah. driving away – in their car, like out, out running, out driving explosion. Well, they actually outran the explosion of the grenade in that hallway. So, yeah. uh, so then they're in the parking lot, and Brian Cox pulls up, and, and they, they don't know who he is. But he turns out he's a he's a he's a badass dude. Yep, and he and he does. And then we fought... saying, by the way, I keep a gun next to my dick, just, just in case <laughs> yeah. you find me dead somewhere. You yeah. need a gun. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, because that comes in handy, obviously later. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, and that's when we find out she's an actual assassin. And, and, and there's yeah. the expository dialogue yeah. where it's like, so it turns out that she, uh, her cover. And, was, and he carries a flask like everyone should. It doesn't quite make sense, though. So basically two of the baddies in this movie were actually targets for Charlie Baltimore. 
She was, um, supposed, she was supposed to murder Craig him. Craig Bierko yeah. and guy who, David Warner were no, her actual David, targets. David Warner's not in this movie. Yes, he is. No, he's not. Yes, he is. David Warner? He's in the next no. fucking major scene. He tortures her by drowning her. That's David Morse. Yeah, David, David Morse. Morse. Yeah. I always... David Warner. No, no. I no. Sorry. Yeah. I always get... Uh, I guess she was possibly married to David Morris or something. She's not sure. He was the target. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so, and so they, she was so, pretending so, to be a, a teacher so right. she could fuck uh, and, David Morris. And, and kill him eventually, right? I guess so. I guess. It sure took him a long time. So that's the long con. Yeah. Um, but, but so it's it's why she I, also I, fucked Craig Bierko for some reason. <laughs> they're driving because uh, I, I guess that Samuel got uh, kicked in the balls at some point. Or got, there's a line as like uh, she goes, uh, he's, she goes, uh, are you thinking what I'm thinking? What your balls hurt? No, 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 no. It was. Uh, are you thinking what I'm thinking? He goes, I hope not, because right now I'm thinking about how much my balls, balls hurt. hurt. Yeah. No, this movie's got great yeah, fucking it, banter. It, it's actually that's a pretty good line. And so they they go to David Morris's uh, like a farm, and I actually I remember I always like David Morris. I like that guy. He's, he's like, great. Yeah, and then same elsewhere. And he's a fame actor yeah. of Sean Penn. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, he's but, in like the Indian Runner and right. the Crossing. And he's in yeah. Green, the Green Mile. The yeah, no, he's he's a great actor, and I, I remember from seeing elsewhere. He's such a he's like, a master yeah. of understatement. Yeah, totally. And he's that guy that shows up and is always solid and every, everything that's in. Plays a lot of bad guys. <laughs> you knew he was a baddie. Well, I didn't. I did at this point, but I was kind of thinking it, and then I I, I wrote. Never trust David Morris. <laughs> never, never trust David Morris. Never trust David Morris. That's the Morse code. <laughs> yeah. you, 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 you know. I was already thinking of a Morse code joke. That one didn't happen to me, though. No, you're too slow. So, they, so they, they've so they ditched Brian Cox, and they've discovered, they've found David Morris. Right. And then uh, and Sam Jackson, of course, is doing a thing where he's got a rifle and a gun. Right. And he's just, he's just you know, he's in the distance watching um, Samantha and David Morris through the, 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 the scope and and, and uh, through through this whole thing, uh, Sam Jackson's got that, da, 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 which right. I really like. He's, yeah, because he, it helps me remind helps things. Him. But I'm like, turn around, turn around. Yeah. It's, it's oh, stop, there's so gonna be a gun stop, in the back of your head. Stop singing and turn around. But then Brian Cox shows up and puts a gun in his head, and it's like, do you know who that guy is? Blah 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 blah. He was the fucking target and all of this shit. Then he realizes he's a and, bad and, guy. And then I'm like, well, then how about sometime in the last seven years, you kill him? <laughs> I know. Or find what do you someone. Know? He's like living on the farm. Hire another assassin. And then they do. <laughs> then they then they do the stupidest thing. Now they've established that David Morse, who's not too far away, he's like forty yards away. They can take him at any time. And, and, and David. Or, or, or Brian Cox tells Sam Jackson to drop the rifle, and then goes. By the way, he's the bad guy. Was it? And was it? Was it? Running, Bri- then they go running around the corner, going like, "Hey, Samantha, don't trust him. He's a bad guy." Blah blah blah. Why did you shoot Here's him? Here's a crazy idea. There's a rifle with a scope. Pick it up. Blow his fucking brains out. <laughs> yeah. But then we couldn't have the great. The helicopter sort of, come down. No, or no, the uh, the next scene when when they're, she's tied to the wheel. Oh yeah, this weird water wheel. Well, what was it's that a thing? medieval form of torture. No, it's not, that's not what well, it was, but but that's not what it's for there. No, it's, it's not what it's, it's, it's for. It's to but... make like like uh, things for the farm. I'm not sure what kind of things. It, but... It's like some kind of weird. Wa- it's weird. It is it, weird. It's a water wheel in a barn. But all these all those old timey farms and have that where you can conveniently fucking strap someone to it and then drown them. You've done <laughs> that's some conversion. That's not what it's it. for. Well, then how is it so easy to tie her? And, and because then, it's a movie. Like, well, they've then converted then like, it for torture Because it's purposes. a movie. So but that's no. an old school form of torture, but, like in that Marlena But I'm, How but do you I, tie a person to a <laughs> wheel? You drill some holes in it and you get some ropes. No, okay, but she's unconscious and she probably weighs about uh, I think uh, it's, I think it's how, how, how would you get an unconscious person? That's what I'm saying. It'd be so, you're only one guy. Uh, there's, there's oh two no, guys, no, there's there's two guys. oh wait wait wait, wait. no no you, you tie her to the top of the wheel but why yeah. why would you go and through all you, that trouble and, and you, once it's underway it's a great form of torture you can see yeah it's very it's very um uh, theatrical yes it's very it's, it's, it's practical very, yeah yeah and then why don't you kill the fucking pi dude that you probably don't give a shit Who, about who's who's for some reason rather than like, stripping off <laughs> naked he's, he's naked with like some bleeding like wounds in a barn oh but you, but you probably want to know what he knows before you kill him, right? So that makes they, sense. No, it doesn't. No, they should just because he doesn't know anything. Well, they, they, don't, know anything. they don't know that he doesn't know anything. No. Water that you're gonna. Do. So I was really sad when they when they went underwater with uh, Gene Davis and then Brian Cox's corpse is there. I was like, oh, Brian Cox. He was the like, best thing in this movie. Yeah, he was. He was the best thing in this movie. And he, he actually is the best thing in this movie. And then uh, David, uh, 
Duchovny? I, I keep saying David Warner. Morse. Morse. David Morse. Yeah. Is all there is no more beautiful female face than when it's distended in pain. <laughs> Witness the agony of childbirth. Like, what, what, what is this? <laughs> yeah. And then she she threatens him, saying, "Yeah, I'm going to kill you." And and he he kind of has a little bit of hesitation because she he kind of knows she might. So why don't you shoot her in the I head? I know, I know. So they put the wheel underwater, and she somehow gets out of her ropes and grabs the gun out of Brian Cox's cock. Grand Cox. Yeah. And, and she uh, cocks the She gun. cocks again, which I don't think guns work if they've been submerged they in water well, for a long time. At least not in movie logic. I don't know if that's true. I only know that from movies. No, they, yeah, they, me too. I never they fired a handgun like they that. Can, they can fire underwater but she, now, for sure. So he wheels her back up for some reason, because I don't know why he just doesn't let her drown. Why is he it? I know. Why just let her drown? Yeah. And then she's obviously freezing. Her lips are turning blue, and then she shoots him and then gets out. It's dumb, but I liked it. And yeah, then, me too. Um, okay, so Blob, and then she saves Samuel L. Jackson. And then they wind up in Atlantic City. Now, now at this point, she's taking a shower, well, with 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 the w- without drawing the curtain. I'm okay with that. Boy, why are you taking a shower without pulling the shower curtain? Nobody does that. Because yeah, uh, Rennie was like, Yeah, come on, come on, lady, yeah, yeah, come on, no, my, lady. my wife. He's like, what? so then she tries to fuck Sam Jackson. Yeah. Um, and I I like this scene because he turns her down and goes, Look, you're not fucking me because you want to fuck me. It's because you just want you want to bury the school teacher that you that, that you thought you were. So, I also forgot there's, there was a great moment earlier in the film when Sam Jackson's like, "Do you always swear this much?" She's like, "No." He's like, "Because when I first met you, you're all like, oh, fiddle dee dee, I burned the muffins.' But now, but now, when you swear, when you walk into a bar, a bunch of sailors are running out. <laughs> running out yeah. Anyways, so then she goes for a walk and she's using sand. We're just gonna well, things up here. She, has she cut her hair and dyed her hair at this point? And so she's she's blonde Let, let's and short just say hair. She has. Wearing so the, a lot of This is a la Blade Runner. This is all in the same she, sequence. She, she, she totally like Pris from Blade Runner at this point. And then she goes for a walk. She and Sam Jackson go to a payphone and make a phone call to the CIA or whatever. There, there, there's to, a fun, to lure out the. There, uh, there, there's a funny pop goes the we, pop goes the, the weasel joke. Um, I can't remember what it was. I hope you guys remember. Yeah, I can't recall. Anyways, all right. Anyways, carry but on. But anyways, blah, 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 blah. Uh, she goes for a walk and some creep shows up with a gun. And that guy's like a Toronto actor. I can't remember his name. But uh, Was it like uh, Al Waxman? Uh, Red Green, actually. Uh, it... Right. Anyways, <laughs> right. So, uh, uh, takes her into an alley and, and is going to blow her brains out. And she's like, you're early. Right. So now she's just full on Charlie Baltimore. Yeah, now she's just killing guys left and right. And uh, the guy's got a gun on, trained on her, and then suddenly Sam Jackson's there with a gun, and he's like, "I, I got a gun." And then Sam Jackson goes, "This ain't no ham on rye." <laughs> Sorry, I would have been here earlier, but I was busy thinking up that ham on rye line. <laughs> oh, it's it's great. It's like this movie isn't about the plot well, well, or the story. It's, it's all about, about the, the details. The, the, well, yeah, the de- when they're in the the hotel room and uh, they're 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 you know she they're doing shots and she rolls the shot oh, glass. How do you do that? Yeah, and, and the thing is, why do you do that? She <laughs> like I thought it was, that's like weird. It's a weird way to take a shot, but it's, it's great. She rolled it across her mouth and then and then and then took the shot and then rolled it again off the other side. Well, of her it's head. like yeah, she rolls it in one side of her face when it's full yeah. and takes a shot and then rolls it up the other yeah. side of her face when it's empty. Yeah. And I'm like, how do I how do I not know that yeah. trick? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder how like 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 take thirty five. Do that again. Can we not use tequila this time? It's time? funny because Adam, the bartender I mentioned earlier, who loved this movie, mentioned he could never figure that out either. <laughs> yeah. So and this is this whole scene in the alleyway. This takes place like right near then, the, the Bloor Cinema and uh, and Honest Ed's Honest Ed's. in yeah. Toronto. That's right. Uh, and so she just fucking like kills. Two dudes turn up and she can kills them both. And right. then, she, then she goes to Sam Jackson like, "Are you a fucking idiot?" She, was, was this before uh, he says, uh, "Last time I got blown, candy bars cost a nickel." Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a great line. So I'm telling you, this movie because he's he's 150 years old. In but 95. candy candy bars cost a nickel around 1915 I, well, or so. It, it was it was. He's it, exaggerating for effect. He's exaggerating. I, I understand that for comedic yes, effects. Yes. So the, then they're, then they're driving somewhere and he yeah. wants to get out. So she boots him out of the car and she throws him out of the car and he just lays I lo- there. I love that scene he just, too. He just lays there on the side of the road. His oh. cars are driving by, almost running him over. And he just lights himself a cigarette because <laughs> yeah. he knows she's going to come back. And she does. Yeah. The, and, and and then he makes a driving Miss Daisy joke, which was actually pretty funny. Was... And so everyone's on to her, and uh, they're trying to kill her. There's a scene when this I, I I don't know how it's set up. What do I have written here? Oh yeah, he, she oh she's she's running through the neighborhood with a rifle, and she's got her blonde hair, 
and her eyes are all because she's going home to see make sure that her family's okay oh no no she's going back for that key going back for the key that's right that's around mr Jer- jerkins yeah, yeah jerkins. mr jerkoff's uh... <laughs> and that, um and then she comes across that kid who was smoking earlier in the film <laughs> yeah, and she threatens them she threatens them, and they, yes anyone ever actually peed yourselves in fear but I, there's no, a really great shot. I peed shot myself from happiness. In, uh, it reminded me of uh, I, 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 The Man Who Fell From Earth. Constantly The Man Who Fell To Earth, the great David Bowie, Nicholas Rogue film. Candy Clark pisses herself when he turns into an alien in front of her. Pisses that herself. might make me pee myself. There's right. also but, but, a great oh, pee in yourself only, scene. Only if I have to pee. There's though. also a great pee in yourself scene in um, <laughs> Threads. Still the best war Ugh. film ever. When you the bomb threads. goes off, it cuts to a woman on the street who's peeing herself. Yeah, but she would have done that anyway. Terror, yeah. It had nothing to do with the <laughs> yeah, nuke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was really Thursday. Um, yeah. there's, a, there's the first peeing yourself scene I ever saw was in the movie Starman, directed by John Carpenter. That's Karen, a, Karen Jeff Allen Bridges. pees herself when Je- Jeff Bridges comes back as her dead husband. Oh, oh a, I guess it's a, a visual reaction is why is. people pee themselves in movies. I've never known anyone that's pissed themselves in fear or in pain or in happiness or in ecstasy. I don't know. Or just for the fuck of it. <laughs> Nobody pees themselves for the fuck of it. Bronson Pinchot actually has a story about being on the set of uh, pissing his pants on the set of uh, Perfect Strangers, where they're all sitting on a couch and, and they've been kept so long in between takes so he had to go pee yeah, he's he, gonna go pee no he just he couldn't hold it anymore and then he just pissed his pants and that's he, ridiculous and then he just had to go uh yeah i, I just pissed myself <laughs> i'm suing everybody it's weird because it's balky saying it and i'm right. like huh and then of course there's the kid in magnolia who pisses himself yeah there's a, there's a lot of peeing yourselves in movies you can probably look at like a like hundred movies of people peeing themselves. No, I say the, the again, next, it's, it's like amnesia. Next series of podcasts we recorded exclusively with films in which a character pees himself. So. He goes back to her small town. Yes. To get the key. Yeah. There's a scene with the kid which has nothing to do with anything. Right. Although it's kind of funny where she's like, because he's smoking and she's like, if I see you smoking again, I'm gonna blow your brains out. Yeah. And he so she traumatizes himself. a child. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's scarred for life. He probably, he probably froze to death and right then, there. I don't know. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, of course, the kid is kidnapped. And so and then she puts on the skates and which is, which, the... Which is... The, which is... Which takes so like, long. Like, like, for me, this... Okay, like, this is when this movie started to lose me a little bit here. I, I love like, the skating so, so, scene. So, it's so, ridiculous. But do it more. Top yourself at this okay, point. Okay, okay, listen. I'm loving the ludicrous. Okay, well, it's ludicrous on several levels. One... Because early in the movie, um, they were in the same town where they jumped out of the yeah. of the um, the train station, and it said thin ice because the ice was you know. It oh was, yeah, but, uh, but here it's, it's thick enough to skate on. It's thick enough to skate on and have a car on it because the car ends up on the on the. Oh yeah, on, you're right. But shit, now I hate the movie. Do you know how long it takes to put fucking skates on? She grabs skates and she runs. It takes like ten minutes to put oh, no. skates That's on. That's why I don't skate. I play hockey. I play ice hockey, and I hate. If I was a rich man. I would have a little monkey that does my skates. I would, I, I would like a little helper monkey, a little skate monkey. When I was a little kid, I played minor hockey, and I have a vivid memory of a Friday night practice, literally a day or two after. You'd have to check the day of the week when the Space Shuttle Challenger, Challenger. exploded. 1985. But a day or two after that, the, the very next hockey practice after that, the equipment manager, remember equipment managers of our – he was bus. tying our skates – he was tying my skates, and he says to me, he was totally stoned, too. It was this guy named Tommy. Tommy, can <laughs> you somehow hear this? Smells like Otto's jacket. He was tying my skates for me, and I'll never forget him going, hey, Alex, what does NASA stand mm. for? And I'm just going, I don't know. And he goes, need mm. another seven astronauts. Yeah, yeah. Then he... Those jokes came up really that, fast. That also, he told the me. The red button one's better. The teacher, because the teacher yeah, was on there. He's yeah. like, what was the school teacher's last Words on the Space Shuttle uh, Challenger, and he said, what does this button do? No, it's, what, it's what's his case. red button for. What does this button do? Not the red button. Mm. What's this red button for? That, that's the punchline. Red buttons. What does this button do? Back to the movie. Because you, and so, so she now, she, now she, a dark cloud. So, so, so now she, we have to edit more not, of it. There's not, nothing I, left of the podcast. I'm just thinking so of dead she, school teachers. So she skated across the, that, across that the rink manages. across the rink to start shooting at cars on the road. Yeah. In broad daylight. In broad Again, daylight, there's people all around. No the car, the car drives down onto the onto the lake, which should should have collapsed right through the ice. 
and she shoots them all dead. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, see, I, I, and then and then, then got, Samuel L. Jackson makes a comment. So, that she just wounded them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But she, she was shot in the shoulder. Or whatever, yeah. But yeah. And then they go, and then they cut, cut to the church where the families of the oh, church. Because yeah. she, yeah, cause she, she's, she's aiming at them. <laughs> no, no, she's she's, she, she's not aiming. She's looking to see them. She's uh, not like she's not going to shoot them. Well, well, she's, I thought she was going to take because she breaks. I have to eliminate any. Any yeah. evidence of where I was? Well, the thing is, that was not established earlier that, that the church is right across the street from our house at all. Yeah, because no. I was like, the church is right across the street from the house. Yeah, that was not, it was not there like, before. And then she pulls out the rifle. And Maybe like, they built that I'm like, is this, is this like, I don't like Mondays? What, like, what's going on here? I thought you, she was tying you, up loose ends you, you, and she was going to take a shot at them. <laughs> and then the film was going even further. Crazy. I, I would have loved if she was tied up loose ends by taking out her family. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, the early scenes, like when she assembles that gun, I found that shit scary. I thought she was going to be completely ruthless and sociopathic with her own family later. Because so, well, I love that point earlier. It's not We didn't mention this in the podcast, but I really love when she's terrified, she's scared up in the treehouse. Uh-huh. And the boyfriend goes to see her, and he's like, don't ever worry. And so she says, it's not you I'm worried about. Or it's right. not me actually, I'm worried about. Actually, yeah, it's a good line, because she was worried about like, killing her. Yeah, Actually, that would have been good if she killed the family. I would have uh, I would have been on board with that. I, I would have been okay with that. Okay, this no. doesn't happen enough in films. No, the, no, the lead just wipes out. Well, then, but then you get the. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, <laughs> meanwhile, in the church, which is something Charlie Baltimore didn't care to look into, Craig Bierko just saunters in. And, yeah, I know, and <laughs> and he's got like a gas mask <laughs> that he puts over a, <laughs> in a, a, a little church girl full of people. Yep, yeah. and and then he pulls out a switchblade and threatens to murder like another child. <laughs> yeah, he's like, Shh, don't tell anyone. But the thing is, after he walked five feet from them, yeah. tell everybody. I know. It's like, come on. It's a, basically, you know, fuck all of it. Like, th- this chunk of the movie I found kind of boring. Well, this is when it gets, as for, as I said, for me, it just starts to get too much. You know, they had this great thing going, and they kind of lost the plot a yeah, little bit like, along you know, the way. It's like, you know, the mid-movie. <laughs> and, th- and this is also when I realized that Samuel L. Jackson's character's name is Mitch Hennessy. Mm-hmm. Mitch Hennessy, which is a great name. Well, yeah, no, she's always going Hennessy. <laughs> Mitch Hennessy. And every time I'm like, I could use a shot of. Scott. So, so they're yeah, on, I could really use it, uh, like some whiskey. So they're on their way to the Holiday Inn in Cayuca for some reason, and they're driving an old beater, and uh, and oh, they have to set oh. them. Oh, they have to set them up so they go to like a phone company, hold everybody at gunpoint, and to to, to set up a, like a fake phone call. But then there's one great moment because Sam Jackson has the headset on. He's waiting for the phone call to come in. Somehow they've established that this call is going to happen. I still don't know how. Me, I uh, don't. Yeah, but, but, but he says his name is uh, Chad. He was like, call it in. This is Chad speaking. Right. How my yeah. director call? Yeah. It, like it that, actually, that little moment of acting yeah, was, was good. So fucking great on it Sam Jackson's good. part. Yeah, because well, he's, he's he's a good actor. Oh, he's terrific. Yeah. Anyways, blah 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 then, blah then, blah. Let, let's get to the good shit. I, I have something right here. Said, blind the kids and shoot their knees. Yeah, he he threatens to. Um, Who's he? Like the bad guy? Craig yeah. Beer, Craig Bierko threatens to blind. Uh, blind, blind the, the kids and take Charlie's daughter. Daughter. Sure, right and, and, that's not, it's that, that, his daughter actually that, 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 that's that's pretty nasty that's un- it is, and he finds out it's his daughter yeah. too and doesn't give a shit yeah yeah but then there's a whole thing he's a like, psycho dude look in her eyes because they're yours and i actually <laughs> i actually froze it they're, they're not the same eyes <laughs> well of course they're not the same eyes they're different eyes they're Come on, different charlie people. charlie baltimore i'll just put it this way she was moving her charlie all over baltimore oh, 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 hey wow she and, was a what God would call a slut, and uh, <laughs> God would God call anybody a slut? Well, no, she she was she was doing God, she God she, she was doing it for the job. Everybody God called a slut uh, des- deserve. Eh, eh, eh. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Yes, so we're we're we're, int- we're introduced to the, the the creepy bald doll, which will come in handy uh, later. Yeah. Okay, which is the, the word. Okay, preposterous is the best way to describe a lot of these action sequences. Mm. And a doll full of gasoline. Mm, which would actually hold that much gasoline. <laughs> Are we really it's a get, small doll. Do we have to describe how all of this goes down? Because it will take no, no, the better no, part of three no, hours. We don't need to do that. Um, uh, so okay, Charlie the, Baltimore and Sam Jackson creep up on some kind of weird... I guess we're going to do that then. No, 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 no. At no, the, no. the Holiday Inn in K- and Cayuga. Or, yeah, whatever whatever it is. Because, it, because it, they, the bad guys have the sinister plot to blow up some sort of chemical bomb. 
Yeah. And for, in a small it, town, for some mid, reason, in the middle of a small town. But, but why is Christmas? Well, but it's well, what's the point of like blowing up a small town? Did you not hear? No, maybe I it, don't it's know. to get more money out of Congress. But what, why a small town? Why not blow up a bigger because town? Why would be, kill more people? Because well, because they they don't want to do a bigger town because bigger towns are worth something. Whereas like small town USA, it's it's like people will, will be like, oh my god, uh, yeah, give um, Homeland Security, which doesn't exist I, yeah. yet. Um, <laughs> But I but this is like what six years before nine eleven. But so. the thing is that this this trope shows up a lot in movies. Well, I just watched a movie today. It's a terrible movie called Angel Has Fallen. My kid was six. We watched it. We like oh, bad. I haven't act. seen that one. We yet. watched bad action movies. I've, I've actually seen the other two. And, and, and they're terrible. Yeah, they're all terrible. And uh, it's all the same shit. It's like to you know to get more money to go to war and bullshit. It's a, it's such a trope now. So the, yeah, so they're gonna blow up a small town. Yes. In a tanker truck. Yeah. At Christmas. To get more money out of and, Congress, and, 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 and so and so for some reason they they capture Gina Davis and she's trying to get out with the kid and they lock her and the kid in a freezer, in a freezer. instead of murdering them, which I, they probably should have done. And they I lock them in a freezer. Like a freezer. Yeah, oh, she's no, no. defying every odd at this point. Yeah. You just put a bullet. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. There, it's the Bond okay. thing. In this case, it actually wasn't the Bond thing. It wasn't just ooh, we're gonna lock you in a freezer mm-hmm. for the sake of locking you in a freezer. It's because the bodies had to be perfectly preserved. So, but, they, so they could plant them in the car. But no, them. no. But they already had the other body because when that when they open the freezer and there's a dead guy frozen, it's like who the fuck is that guy? Yeah. And then but it came it into play crazy. later. Anyway, so, <laughs> and, and Samuel L. Jackson got caught, and this is my favorite moment in the whole movie. Upstairs. <laughs> yeah. Samuel L. Jackson. My favorite moment as well. Tied to a chair. <laughs> yeah. It, and, it, well, the, but think all these things had to happen. One that early in the movie. Uh, early in the movie. Gina Davis's character gave her daughter a candle to put in the window. It's a fairly large oh candle, God, yeah, which for thing. some reason the daughter carries around this large candle, like either in her backpack or under her, and and, and stuff some uh, matches yeah. in her cast. Into her cast. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I would just picture this kid like this is taking weeks, to, and she's carrying this giant candle under her coat. There was no candle no, in, in no. the freezer, but the, but the matches were under her. Uh, but the the, the 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 candle came into play because she knew she was in the hotel room because she carried that. That's how she knew she was in the hotel room uh, at the at the Holiday Inn. Oh, yeah, right, Yeah, because she right, put the right, candle right, in the right, window. Right. Earlier, they they got trapped in a basement with a bunch of gas shooting all over the place. And a bunch of gasoline conveniently shooting everywhere. So they filled the doll up with gasoline, so, which is a relatively small doll. It had a big head, but it was a small doll. It's very nice of the bad guys to allow um, <laughs> the, 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 their victims the, to carry a doll around. To carry a, a doll that smells like gasoline. <laughs> Dolls are not like watertight. Like, no, like there must not? have been <laughs> gas dripping. Well, it was. Well, it was one of those uh, those dolls that pee. For some reason that girls like Just, back in the they, they have a doll that would urinate. That it's did like, not but, last very long. No, that's a bad idea. Yeah. Again, just, there seems to be a theme here: urinating characters. It, it was ba- yeah. dolls urinating. Dolls are dolls full of gasoline. That so, doll was like it, 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 there's there's a scene where the, there's gas pouring like out of a tank, and I have to assume that they're putting the doll under the tank to fill it up. It'd be covered in gas. Everyone would be covered in gas. Yeah. And they're taking a doll in his room. There's reeks of gasoline. Everyone smells of gasoline. Uh, nothing, nothing. I heard that today where you know the director, uh, I'm sorry, it's just I can't pronounce it probably, but the director of Parasite. Yeah, I know what well, you're talking about. He was on cue today. He yeah. brought up how smell is one of the hardest things to express. In, in movies, of course. Movies, of course. Well, I, I, I've ever, ever, so it's kind of like. So let's just get through this. Yes. So on the third. I floor, got two pages of notes. How's that on, possible? Because this movie is ridiculous. Uh. So on the third floor, Sam Jackson is tied to a chair, and Craig Bierko is coming in, and instead, and he throws a knife at His Sam balls. Jackson's dick, yeah. and it sticks in the chair. Yeah. That's crucial. Yes, it is. Meanwhile, three stories down, uh-huh. um, uh, a mother and daughter are 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 left to freeze to death, and um. Mother has filled the fucking doll with gasoline, yeah. And she she carves she, she some, and they let her have a fucking crowbar, yeah. And she carves a little after a after after, after, after of, I, I love the scene when like uh, Craig Baker swears at the kid. He just like, like he just like swears at this child. Yeah, he's like, a, he's a, he's a, a bad dad. Yeah. Um. Anyways, and so then then. Somehow Gina Davis squirts enough gasoline well, out of this doll. Well, you to know go, what? You, well, you know why? Because it's one of those dolls that pees. 
Was it? Yeah, it was one of those peeing dolls. Oh, I think dolls. you were joking about no, no, that. No, 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 no. It's one of those right. peeing dolls. So she squirts the fucking gas pee like <laughs> under the door after she's she because she she's gouged out. Which, a, by the like way, a little... it's a freezer, so it must have been like sealed. All However, the yeah. And there just happened to be a bunch of oil drums. And then she's like trying to fucking hit the ground with the crowbar to get a spark. Part. And the stupid and kid the is like, daughter's this like, mommy, I carry matches in my broken arm that you <laughs> yeah. broke. And uh, whatever she. So she, they, they they blow up the whole without the the, the deer lick the entire lodge, building right? blows up without yeah. somehow killing the mother and daughter. Yeah. It also blows Samuel Jackson. <laughs> no moments before Craig Bierko, he's like. In five seconds, I'm gonna move yeah, my, I gotta, my my index finger. To I'm gonna pull count the to five. Your, I'm just <laughs> yeah. totally pointing and, at you. And yeah. there's this fucking explosion, and Sam Jackson, <laughs> with the knife near his dick, yeah. stuck in the chair, goes flying through the whole the wall chair but he's and through this, the Holiday Inn sign, <laughs> smashes into a tree, and then there's a bad guy there, and he pulls the knife out and throws Trish. it into his neck because he's a private detective. Yes, yeah, so they're trained for that. As stupid and idiotic and improbable as that scene was, I love that scene. Me too. <laughs> the film is pretty funny. It's almost borderline like, was this intended yeah. to be a comedy? Like yeah. slapstick comedy. Could, and, and, yeah. and, this is when he, and he also calls uh, Gene Davis at this point, you foxy you bitch. You foxy bitch. <laughs> yeah. um, there's some shooting, there's some running. There's a whole bunch of that. Shooting it doesn't, and it, running. It doesn't matter. Then the little girl's like, I should probably hide. And so she hides in the goddamn truck with a bomb on it. No, no. She hides in a weird cage that she can't get out of. Yes. <laughs> it's to ride from the East Coast. One of those compartments. So, and, then, and then for some reason, they're, they're dry, she steals the truck. She steals, and, 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 and has, Sam Jackson has been shot in the side. Yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden, the, the truck has no brakes because, you for know, whatever for, reason. for no reason at all. Because yeah, Shane Black. And, and then, so it. they're trying to race to Canada, which is awesome. They're going across the oh, Peace Arch. This is where, like, we could describe all the action, but it's... Well, it's pointless. So the, at the, one point, Craig Bierko, you think he falls into a, a, a river, and of course he does And then he, and then he, get, and then he gets back. Which he is would, so he would, fucking... He would have died. This movie is two hours and, and then that long. It taken like, it would have taken, like, a, like, at least two hours to climb back up to the bridge. No, no, but no, no, but he, but he hangs on a helicopter. They use helicopters excessively in this yes, film. There's a bit helicopters. when they're flying over Niagara Falls that is so gratuitous where mm -hmm. it's just like, look at the helicopter yeah. over Niagara Falls. Yeah. She, like, so for some, how somehow sets a guy on fire who falls out of the helicopter and gets caught in the in the uh, the Christmas yeah, lights. How does she set him on fire? I, I, I can't remember, but she he's and, and she then, uses him as a counterweight to. Pull, she uses him as a counterweight. She like zips up to the top of the peace arch, shoots all the helicopter guys who crash, and, the, and then Craig yeah, Beer who, falls on the truck, and which explodes later. Anyways, she says earlier in the movie, uh, "You will die screaming." And he does. And he course. does. No, no, no. No, he doesn't scream when he dies. The movie didn't have to be two hours and one minute long. It could have been ninety minutes. Could have been two hours long. 30 seconds mm -hmm. anyways so he, she's like uh, run daughter run 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 and charlie baltimore is, is like all bleeding and stuff and then she like passes out and the daughter stops and turns around and comes back and, and brings and, her uh, back and, from the dead and, and, and the she, similar pep talk that she gave her life is yeah. pain deal with it it reminded me a lot Bitch. of when Sarah Connor comes into her own in the first terminator when she's like get up soldier uh -huh. oh, yeah, michael right. bain yeah it reminded me of that it was all dumb. I, I, I thought it was lame. And it I was all it. it was all dumb. I hated I hated the whole little. Anytime a kid does anything in the movie, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. Then Sam Jackson at the last because they're they're running away from a truck that's gonna explode in like uh -huh. and it's like twenty seconds. So then Sam Jackson just happens to turn up at the last second with even though he's been shot in the stomach mm -hmm. and but but and, bl and blown through a hotel window. Conveniently, the fucking bad guys have left a car with a dead body in it. Yeah, and then they well, drive away from the explosion and kaboom and um do they do the thing where the back of the car lifts up because the explosion is so strong and it did wasn't it on fires it was, was going down the street like, oh no fire? and and then no and then cars are flying through the air <clears throat> right and he's like uh, uh, swerving yeah. away and then um the movie ends and the the head of the cia who was a, a scumbag gets arrested and blah 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 and the president gd spradlin who played the scumball in godfather 2 who ends up in in bed with the dead prostitute. He's like the congressman who tries to. In which movie? In Godfather 2. Okay. He's the president. Yeah. He gives a congratulatory call 
And uh, Samuel L. Jackson ends up on, uh, on Larry, Larry King. King Live. Right, and, which is kind of funny. And, and basically redeems himself in front of his wife and child, which yes. we haven't mentioned once. And then so tells uh, it doesn't matter. It was really a minor point. Oh, yeah, right, right. And then he tells that, I actually think it's a pretty good joke. Yeah. I'm but, 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 you know, he's fully recovered from his injuries, and they're like, yeah. Referring to it just happened in two days. Like, yeah, I think it was a shot. But, and yeah, and like also, totally since... since you blow no through a window. No also, words. since when did Larry King or CNN ever actually report on anything? That, <laughs> it wasn't, like, just basically that, celebrity related? That, and and uh, he does the joke. It's like, uh, I've always been frank and earnest with women. In New York, I'm frank. Right, in Chicago, I'm earnest. earnest yeah. No, and he's also still wearing the same cheesy suit. Yeah. I don't know. I love... That was tacked on last minute, by the way, because in the rough cut, in the, or in the original cut of this film, not the rough cut, but How... the original cut, he died. Really? Yeah, and people, too many people complained. At the preview screening, were yelling out, you can't kill Sam Jackson. And... <laughs> We all like the movie. We I all, loved it. It's we, ludicrous. It's ridiculous, but I love it. We all super enjoy the movie. I think and, this is the best Shane Black movie. Um, yeah, which which I guess he, isn't saying that much because it's not a great movie. It's a fun movie. I'll watch it again for sure because it's a good time. Uh, and Jean Davis is great. I love her transformation. I love when she I does. I loved her transformation yeah. too. And and I also she's like the, a superb actor. She is a superb actor. And uh, and Samuel L. is great. He's always great. And it, I think they were they had a good chemistry together. We oh. all know Mondays at Black Dog Video is two for one. So. Alex, uh, somebody walks up to the counter holding a copy of The Long Kiss Goodnight, and not tell- knowing that they get a free rental. Um, what would you pair up with The Long Kiss Goodnight? Two suggestions. <laughs> the long kiss, kick, kiss, goodnight. bang, bang, because sure. it's also by Shane Black. Black. Yeah, takes, takes, I takes, love takes, the movie, and it has the word kiss in it, just it, like Long Kiss it's, it's, The Last Boy Scout, which has nothing uh, in common. Also Shane Black. Just because it's over the top and ridiculous. I hate that movie. But, but I love done. Kiss, Kiss, Bang, Bang. How about you, Mr. D? I'm thinking like, if, are we gonna go Christmas movies? Like, obviously the uh, whatever you want. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go something completely different uh, for Christmas. I'm gonna Why recommend this great Finnish movie called Rare, Rare Exports. Really? Yeah, it's a, if you want a good a good Christmas movie to go with a me a, a pretty good Christmas movie, go Rare Exports. It's a it's a creepy Santa Claus uh, movie. Yeah. It's great. You yeah. said it's a rare Finnish movie. No, that's not. The, no, it's called. It's a Finnish movie called Rare Export. That's oh. not. Oh, I, I always get that mixed up with Troll Hunter for some reason. Troll Hunter is great as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, but uh, Rare Exports. Yeah, they find like a, a Santa Claus buried in the ice, and they yeah things things don't go well when they when they thaw it. Like the thing. Yeah. No. Well, no. It's, it's it's not as good as the thing, but it's different. That's awesome. Yeah. It's it's great, and all these uh, these weird uh, you know Santa Claus troll elves come and attack the town. It's great. Yeah, watch Rare Exports. Hey, Dylan, uh, what right. would you pair up with? Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, Dylan, what's your pick for the uh, you, this two-for-one bullshit Mondays? Well, I, well I'm going to go with – thank you for asking, Darren. And I'm going to go with uh, another movie mm-hmm. that takes action That's and good small to town movie, yep. and, and, and fuse them together. Gremlins? Uh, it, nope. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is a good movie. Uh, directed by Edgar Wright with yeah. um, Simon it, it, Pegg. It, 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 is, it, it is the best of those three the Cornetto, Cornetto trilogy movies. I, I don't find. agree, actually. My, my, I think the best – is, I know you're going to say the world's end. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I, I, I like I like the I think hot the world's fuzz end is actually the best one, but um, I like hot fuzz. Can but, we but, all but, agree though that Simon Pegg is really our customer Ross? It's the same <laughs> so guy. much. Yeah. I've told him that. He, totally he, he, he wishes. Anyways, we're trying to wrap this up before the last call, so I, oh, I'm, got, I'm yeah. going to go with hot fuzz because it, it is like a British take on uh, action meets. Small town. Yep. And I and I think it does it actually a lot better. It's fucking hilarious too. But uh, yeah, and it's got great action scenes. It's a it's a it's an action it's an act, it's a movie that like sort of makes fun of action movies, but it's a great action movie at the same time. Yeah. We are located here at Black Dog Video, and Black Dog Video is located at one four seven zero Commercial Drive here and, in Vancouver and um, thirty four fifty one Canby Street with a flagship store, the mother store, the mother ship. Yep. Yeah, the, the the Borg Cube. The Borg Cube. <laughs> Um, You'll be assimilated. Come on in. Um, come on down. And, and, and rent a movie. Yeah. Get out of here so we can go to last call. So yes. let's, all right. All right. Good night, everybody. The Black Dog After Dark podcast is recorded at Black Dog Video on Commercial Drive in Vancouver, Canada. Presented by Alex Chisholm, Darren Gay, and Dylan Reimer. It is produced by Dylan Reimer and Darren Gay. Alex just kind of stands there and drinks beer. The intro and outro music was recorded by Tiger Burning Bright, composed by Jeff, who works at Jefferson's Barbershop, also on Commercial Drive. And he's a damn good hairstylist. We're not caught.
Well, what's wrong with the dog? It's simple. He's been licking his asshole for the last three straight hours. I submit to you that there is nothing there worth more than an hour's attention. And I should think that whatever he is attempting to dislodge is either gone for good or there to stay. 